My entitled mother freaks out and loses her mind when she finds out she needs to be vaccinated from COVID-19 if she wants to attend my wedding. As she claims I'm trying to politicize my wedding, when in fact I'm just trying to protect some very vulnerable people that would be attending. And now, as a result, she has completely cut contact with me and has ghosted my wedding entirely. Here's what happened. Okay, so this took place a couple of years ago. Long story short, after lots of ups and downs, I met the woman of my dreams and I fell head over heels. All the background that you really need on her family is that she was raised by her mother and her grandmother, the latter of which is in her 70s and suffers from severe CPOD and has only 33% lung functionality due to past health issues, including lung cancer as well. Fast forward through several years of dating and then moving in together, as well as buying our first home together, and we are now planning our wedding. We send out invites to all of the usual family members and friends, and I get a call from my mom, who lives in a different state, who is clearly quite upset. She's furious that that on our invites, we explicitly included that all attendees need to be vaccinated for COVID-19 and anyone showing anything even remotely close to symptoms needed to stay home because the man walking my bride down the aisle and performing part of the ceremony would literally expire if he was ever so unlucky to contract the virus. And by the way, all of this was explicitly told to us by his doctor, who was very nervous about him being in a large group setting for these reasons and actually pleaded with us to please include this part for his health. I explained the reason to her but it was all to no avail. At which point she said she was just gonna have to see the photos afterwards on Facebook if you're seriously gonna politicize your own wedding. When she said this I was dumbfounded and I tried to explain that it had nothing to do with politics and it was literally a life and death situation to which she scoffed and screeched about how selfish we were being and then she proceeded to rattle off all the various news talking points of the time about how the vaccine was evil and so was anyone and everyone who endorsed it. And you know what? That was the last time I talked to her three months before the wedding in 2022, to which she never RSVP'd and never called again. And she and my stepdad ghosted the wedding entirely. And I'm honestly still blown away by the way that she acted. Yeah, that's one of those situations where it's like, okay, good riddance. I don't need you at my wedding in the slightest. Like that is so obnoxious that you would be like, oh, you're politicizing your wedding. It's like, are you serious right now? People have passed away from COVID. How can someone be that selfish where they would try to be like, oh yeah, you're politicizing politicizing your wedding when it's very clear that you're just trying to protect somebody who's a part of the wedding and plays a major role in the function of it. So if this was the straw that broke the camel's back, then honestly, good riddance because someone like that clearly just wants to cause problems and that's not someone I would ever want to deal with on a daily basis. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My little sister is the worst worst person on planet earth. She constantly treats me like garbage and is always using me for everything under the sun. And after a lifetime of dealing with her garbage, I am now stuck at an impasse because I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So to start things out, my sister is horrible to me and the rest of my family. And her personality has been remarkably consistent since birth. She's combative. She lies and gaslights and will manipulate you. She spits in my face constantly. And I am so hurt and tired from a lifetime of this because because I don't think this behavior is normal. I'll provide some examples to try and illustrate what I mean. For starters, when she was a child, she was sitting on my dad's lap and she was pinching him and he told her repeatedly to stop. He told her if she didn't stop, he would drop her. Well, she pinched him again and he dropped her right then and there. She then runs to mommy crying about how dad dropped her to portray herself as a victim, even though she's the one that instigated it. And sure, I know she was young, but again, this is to illustrate the consistency in her behavior. When she was of the age to go to school, she would steal my clothes and she would never return them. In fact, she would destroy them, putting a hole in them or even tearing them up. And worst of all, she would hide the evidence and would always deny it even though everybody knew the truth. She stole my mom's van pre-license and drove it into the garage, causing a lot of damage. And again, repeatedly denied it even though we all knew it was her. She snuck out constantly during high school. She was very into drinking and partying, including spending quality time with people, if you know what I mean. In fact, she did that in my car and let her friends do that in my car as well. She also got into a car accident after taking it for a drive with her friends when it was snowing. And we do share the car, but it was my car. She would say horrible cruel things to me and drive me to tears many times over the years. She started countless avoidable blowout fights with my mom, all by refusing to be cooperative about easy things. For example, refusing to get up early when asked, or refusing to keep her room clean. About a year ago, I got into a car accident near her apartment, which resulted in my car getting 
getting totaled and she declined to drive me home. And I just cried the entire Uber ride home. Now, I will say in her defense, her cat had a procedure at the vet earlier and she didn't want to leave the cat, but I was still hurt because if the roles were reversed, I definitely would have found a way to pick her up after a severe wreck. Also, she would ask me to check on her cats if she was away for a night. And this was a semi-regular thing that she would ask for. But you know what? I would go, even after a long 15-hour workday. When I asked her to check on my cat while I was on vacation, she just simply didn't want to. And in that moment, I just cried because I felt used. She asked for help constantly, but never helps anyone herself. She was recently rude to me during a very stressful period in my life due to work, and I went off on her in text. She showed my parents the text that I sent, but of course failed to tell them why I said those things, thus portraying her as a victim again. Also, as an adult, she is horrible with money. This month, she called me in a panic because she apparently spent all her money on a friend's wedding and could not afford any of her bills. I have been trying to give her financial advice for over a year, and she's just completely ignored me. She asked to borrow $400 and then failed to pay me back when she said that she would. I didn't say anything because I assumed she couldn't afford to pay me back yet, but later I learned that she was partying with her friends over the weekend at an event, and I'm absolutely sure she was spending money while she was there. When I confronted her, she told me she forgot about it, which is just a complete lie. I'm honestly just so tired. Hundreds of similar stories. She just makes me so miserable. I want to cut her off, but she apologizes, and the behavior continues, and the pattern repeats. She's never the bad guy in her versions of the stories, and I would feel like a crazy person if my mom and dad didn't validate me. I don't even live in the same state as her anymore, and she still continues to negatively impact me. I'm just so confused by this behavior, and I just wish I had an explanation. I don't like conflict and I'm not an instigator. I don't start fights with her, and I've always helped her out. I don't know why she is so unkind to me. I'm so envious of siblings who are also friends, because right now I am so distraught, and I seriously don't know what to do. Yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from. Having a sibling or some kind of like extended family member in general who treats you like garbage and literally just uses you whenever they need something, is very disrespectful and a giant waste of your time. Like, you've gone to bat for her several times in her life. You've been there for her when she needs help or when she needs money, but she has never done the same for you pretty much ever. She always takes and she never gives back, and that is so unfair. And it really sucks. Like, you would expect them to at least come to bat for you at least once in your life, but I'm convinced that people who act like this are simply never capable of seeing how they can reciprocate and help people out in return. They only take from others and they never never give back, and in my opinion, that's the mark of a really bad person. And I personally think that your sister definitely fits the bill. So yeah, I don't blame you for being upset, but also, there's gotta be some kind of line of the sand where you finally say, enough is enough. And sure, you don't want to cut her off completely because you do love her, and it sounds like you want to try and have some kind of, like, relationship with her, but that absolutely doesn't mean that you should have to let her, like, walk all over you all the time. Like, in my opinion, some kind of healthy boundary really wouldn't be a bad idea, because the way she's treating you right now is completely inappropriate and you do not deserve that in the slightest. Am I the jerk for not caring if my adopted sister feels included after she decided to bail on the five year anniversary of my dad passing away? Because right now I'm incredibly hurt and I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I have a biological brother who's 24 years old and an adopted sister who's 27. She was adopted when I was one years old and she was around four. For most of my life, my sister received all the attention from our parents and my brother and I were just kind of there. My parents would bend over backwards to make sure she felt like a part of the family, which is great, don't get me wrong, except they didn't bother to make my brother and I feel included. When she was 19 years old, we found her biological family, and they have a great relationship now. But I feel like this completely ruined our own family dynamic. Our dad died five years ago, and it seems like she just moved on from our dad to the other dad, and is also slowly moving on from our family to her biological family. Her biological mom's side also seems to have a problem with us because we are white and my sister is black. So every time we try to be involved in activities, there are always jabs at us, and I think they encourage her to become distant from us. My mom still acts like my sister is the center of the world, though. The last two Thanksgivings, we had to have family Thanksgiving dinner days before because my sister was going to have Thanksgiving with her biological family. And this was the same for the previous Christmas, where we exchanged gifts on the 20th, and my sister didn't even bring my nephew, as he was at his biological grandma's place. My final straw has been a trip that we had planned in honor of my dad. On the five-year anniversary of his passing, we were going to plant an orchard in a certain African country that my dad worked and lived in for years and we visited
visited many times. Planting this was something my dad had planned before he passed away and had planned it all out perfectly. So we would only be executing his plan. We had agreed that the five year anniversary felt like the perfect time. Except now, my sister's biological sister will be getting married around the same time. So this means that my sister can only join us after the actual anniversary day. My mom says it's okay, we can plant trees a week or two later. And she actually said that when we plant the trees doesn't make much of a difference as we'll still be honoring him and that my sister will only ever get to attend her sister's wedding once. She says it's a week's worth of work anyways, so it's not like we're going to be done on the actual day. Well, this made me mad and I have told them that I will be breaking the ground on the actual anniversary day with or without any of them. She said I was being inconsiderate and that I should think about how this will make my sister feel like she doesn't matter to the family. My sister has been part of our family the same amount of time that I have been. Only she can exclude herself. My brother keeps flip-flopping between coming with me to be there for the anniversary or waiting for my mom and sister some days later, and I honestly can't blame him. So am I the jerk for insisting that I'm not waiting for anybody? Because this trip is in two months, and I refuse to take any chances on missing this date. No, I personally don't think you're the jerk, and I don't blame you for stepping forward and saying, yeah, I'm gonna be honoring my dad whether you're there or not. Like, it really seems like your parents have played favorites with your adopted sister, and they've done everything they can almost to like the extreme and it's basically ruined yours and everybody else's experience in the family specifically you and your brother and you know what sure I totally understand that they would want to make sure that your sister feels involved but this has gone so far that they now neglect pretty much anybody else's needs it's literally all about your sister whether you like it or not and that is obnoxious in my opinion so if I was in your shoes I would do the exact same thing I would fly to the African country that you're referring to and I would break ground on this orchard it clearly means a lot to you and your family and it seems like you're the only one taking it seriously because this is obviously something that you guys have been looking forward to for a long time and if they're not going to take it seriously then honestly that is their loss and not yours my parents and siblings are incredibly entitled forcing me to do things around the house that I definitely should never need to do while also practically making me the parent and the leader of my household despite the fact that I'm trying to move out and move on with my life and right now I feel like I'm at a crossroads as I seriously don't know what to do Here's what happened. I'm a 23 year old female and I'm the oldest out of my parents kids and I live with my brother who's 20 years old, my sister who's 16 years old and my youngest brother who's 10 years old. Now I've been essentially a caregiver to these kids for as long as I can remember and when I can't be a caregiver still it all comes down to the fact that according to them I'm just being selfish. I have a rocky relationship with my parents. I don't talk to my stepdad and I resent my mother since apparently it's my job to work around my own work schedule just to keep an eye on the youngest when he's not in school because apparently my other siblings are just too busy to do that. I want to move on with my life and I'm saving to leave but it's taking longer than expected because honestly stuff just keeps coming up. For example, maybe I get sick or I need to get my wisdom teeth removed. The list just goes on and on. My main problem is with my brother who's 20 years old as he has never changed. As a kid, he would scream about oh, I want this and I want that and of course he would be given whatever he wants and now that he's an adult, it's all the same thing. He can't keep any of his money and expects me to just cough it up to him or he's never home so I'm left to look after his two cats. Oh, and he moved out for six months and came back with two cats, but he doesn't even look after them. He leaves his keys at home every night and expects that I'll wake him up and let him in at two in the morning every morning while I have to work from 7 a.m. six days a week most of the time. And it seriously bothers me that even my parents don't say anything about his behavior. He expects us to run around him all the time. We're expected to put money on his card for public transportation. We're expected to feed and look after his cats. And he doesn't even clean up after himself. And of course, we gotta walk on eggshells around him because even if we say one word wrong, it will just start this massive argument. And the last time, a really big and bad one happened. He will sometimes just waltz right into my job, asking me right then and there for free food, which I don't exactly agree with. But then there's my mother. My mother hasn't lifted a finger around the house and at this point I just don't even know how long it's been. I do the cleaning and cooking for everyone as soon as I get home from work and that's at like 5 p.m. Nobody lifts a finger despite my protest and my parents do work but only to really contribute towards their own wants and needs and that mostly comes down to luxuries that they definitely don't need. I honestly don't know. I just feel like they're super entitled and they definitely take advantage of me and at this point I seriously don't know what to do. Yeah that is a horrible situation to be in because right now you are definitely the parent of that household. Your parents have basically 
basically taken a step back. They don't care about what happens to their siblings, and they've placed that responsibility on your shoulders. And it's seriously not fair. You don't deserve to have your entire life put on hold, all because your parents don't want to be parents in your life. Not to mention how your brother's been acting. Like, seriously, this guy's an adult, and he's going to learn the hard way that he can't expect everybody else around him to basically pick up the slack. I mean, the guy is coming in at 2 in the morning, and he's expecting you to let him in at the drop of a hat? That doesn't seem fair at all. He is 20 years old. He should be able to have his keys with him at the bare minimum. Like, that really is not a big ask of anybody, and the fact that your parents aren't enforcing this in some kind of way is really obnoxious. It's also really weird to me that you're the only one responsible for your 10-year-old brother. Like, based on what you've described, if you didn't step up and, like, help out around the house, as well as take care of your family and clean the house altogether, not to mention after working, what, 12 hours a day, then I'm pretty sure nothing would ever get done. So in that regards, I absolutely agree with the original poster. Their family is super entitled, and this is really just not fair, because I think you deserve to have your own life, and you definitely deserve to live around people who are going to take care of you and share the load. So in my opinion, I definitely think it's time to really start looking for somewhere else to live, because what you're going through right now is really unfair, and you do not deserve it in the slightest. Am I the jerk for telling my mom that she is ruining my wedding, as she has practically tried to take over my wedding from the very start? Here's what happened. I'm a 28-year-old female, and I'm dealing with my mom's excessive gift-giving of clothes and her intrusive involvement in my wedding planning. Throughout my entire life, she sent me numerous packages of clothing, always unsolicited, by the way, and mostly, it's stuff not of my style. I've tried multiple times to politely return the items that I don't like, but this hasn't stopped her from sending me more. My fiancé recently pointed out how her style is very different from mine, often very childish. Despite returning 80% of the clothes that she sent, she continues to inundate me with so much more. Well, the situation escalated with my wedding dress. When we went shopping, she pushed for a matronly dress that I hated and dismissed all of the ones that I liked. I eventually chose a dress that everyone, including her, seemed to agree was the most flattering. However, the next day, she insisted it was too low cut and even showed photos of me in it to her friends at my grandmother's funeral to get validation. She claimed that they all agreed with her and suggested that we go shopping again, which I refused. Despite Despite my clear refusal, she booked another dress shopping appointment, which was a humiliating experience. She showed me zoomed in photos of my chest to the staff, who graciously assured her that it was not revealing. However, it didn't stop there. In the car leaving the second dress shop, she said that she was then taking me to shop for rehearsal dinner dresses. I said as politely as possible that I wouldn't be requiring her service for that, to which she matter-of-factly stated that she wanted to be involved in picking it out. After I flew back home, she began sending rehearsal dinner dress options to my house, none of which suited me and were all returned. Each dress was either not my style or the wrong size. Despite my polite returns and clear communication, she persisted in sending more. Recently, I planned a trip back to my parents' place to pick up my wedding dress, which I couldn't bring back earlier due to luggage constraints. A day before my flight, my mom texted me that she had booked an alteration appointment for my dress, claiming it needed to fit perfectly and be less revealing. She also mentioned that she had paid $50 for the appointment. After all our previous conflicts over the dress, I was in disbelief that she had not let it go. So, I told her that the prior dress shopping experience had been extremely upsetting for me and that I couldn't handle doing that again. Her response was dismissive, stating that both dress shopping experiences had been traumatizing for her too. Now, at this, I lost it and I told her that her constantly bulldozing and manipulating me was ruining my wedding. I know my mom genuinely wants to be involved in my life and in my wedding, but her constant interference and insistence on her taste over mine are making what should be a joyful planning process into a nightmare. So am I the jerk in this situation? Because right now, I really don't know what to do. No, honestly, you are definitely not the jerk, but you are seriously overdue for some boundaries, man. Like, why did you agree to go on that second trip even in the first place? Like, if she had planned that, I would have been like, no thanks, I'm not going. But you instead went ahead and went for this second dress shopping experience, and I'm just scratching my head why you let that happen happen. Like, I know if I was in your shoes, I would say, okay, this is definitely a pattern, and she's going to act the same way that she's done before, and it's going to be really awkward and really terrible for me specifically. Like, that would have been my first indication that, no, I can't really trust her in this regard, and that would then inform my decision of whether or not to show up for whatever she's planning. She's even gone behind your back and showed your picture to other family members, allegedly, or even people that she knows, and been like, oh, wow, look at my kid's dress. Look how much she's exposing her body. Like, that alone would be the straw that broke my back, where I would say, 
okay, you're not helping with my wedding planning ever again. And also, I think you need to be way more firm with the way you talk to your mom because your polite interjections and saying, hey, I really don't want to do this is clearly just going in one ear and out the other. She doesn't care about what you want or anything like that. And it's literally just causing problems for you in your wedding planning process. So if I was in your shoes, I would stop letting my mom inside of the situation. I would set very clear boundaries and say, hey, this is how it is now. And if she's got a problem with that, then guess what? That's for her to deal with, not you. Because her behavior truly is very intrusive. And I do not blame you for getting upset or annoyed in the slightest. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.